Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the derivative of a, a function of a complex variable. So let's, uh, let's recall you know, where we've been. We've we really established limits and the idea that you know, limit of z going to z naught of f of z uh, is now we can establish something about whether this exists. Uh, so let's, before we do that, we want to talk about one more thing, which is uh, the continuity. The idea of functions, f of z, is continuous if, if both the limit, I should say continuous at a point, um, z naught of f of z, is equal to some value, some value, and the additional condition that we can evaluate the function at the limit, at the, at the, at the limiting value, and it's equal to, to w naught. Okay, so both the limit has to exist and equal w naught, and the function evaluated at the point has to equal the point. And that means uh, a function is continuous. So now when we're talking about derivatives, derivatives of a function, so let's recall of x in the real plane, or the real line now, we know that um, the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x is equal to this value. If this limit exists, it's equal to f prime at x. All right, so the limit has to exist. Uh, one thing about this, if we can th think of this function now um, as we'll call that g, um, where we're going to think of x now as a fixed value, and this is actually a function of delta x. Okay, first of all, gx, where delta x is equal to zero, does not exist. So this particular function here is actually one of those functions where that is discontinuous. Okay, uh, however, the limit does exist. If the limit does exist, we, we have this I the notion of a, the, the idea that f prime is, a, uh, is the derivative. And, and we also know that with real variables, f of x has a very uh, clear meaning. So I should say, has a clear meaning. And that meaning, of course, is that if I have some function, and I'm looking at a point x, like there, that f prime represents the slope of the tangent line. We all know that, and we, we use it a lot in, in all of your mathematics and applied mathematics. The slope of the tangent line is an incredibly important piece of information about a function. And so, you know, f prime has uh, a lot of descriptive power. All right, so the question then is, what, how can we uh, establish uh, uh, functions of a complex variable, and then also what does it mean? So let's now go to a new page. So we want to define f prime of z at some particular point. Okay, so we can define that as follows. It's just going to be the limit as delta z now goes to zero, and that's a uh, complex number. Right? And that's going to be f of at z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught all over delta z. Okay, and when this limit exists, we say the value is this thing called f prime at z naught. Okay. All right, so let's uh, uh, let's see if we can uh, we can study this this limiting process. So let's try an example. And you know the classic example is that of f of z is equal to z squared. Okay, so let's do this. Limit uh, delta z goes to zero. And when we're talking about this complex number again, so we have some point z naught in the plane, and we're going to look at some little neighborhood around it. We want this function to, to exist everywhere, and of course it has to be continuous at z naught. 
Uh, and now uh, what we're going to do then is take some point that's far away from it, some perturbation, and then we're going to go in like that, and we can go in from any path, right? We have to, the limit involves uh, any path going towards, and that really is this, this idea of right here, um, that is, if this is Z naught right there, then that is Z naught plus delta Z. And as we, as t delta Z goes to zero, we're going along towards Z naught. Okay, so that's the idea. And now what we got to do is, is, is just ca ca compute this. So we have Z, we evaluate the function at Z naught plus delta Z quantity squared, right? Because that's our function here. And then we minus it with Z naught squared all over delta Z. Now delta Z can be any complex number and we're going to take that complex number to zero. All right, well we can uh, foil this out here and that's going to be Z naught uh, squared plus two Z uh, delta Z minus Z naught squared. And that's a Z naught there as well. And that's delta Z. And that we're taking the limit as delta Z goes to zero. Okay, so we can clearly see that a bunch of stuff cancels here. We see that cancels with that. And we see we can ratio those two things. And we're left with uh, the limit as uh, delta Z goes to zero. Oh, sorry, we forgot one thing. Forgot one term. There's also a plus delta Z quantity squared term. So we're left with. 2 z naught plus a delta z term because one of these will cancel. Okay, and so of course that goes to zero as we take the limit and we get 2 z naught. So we've just learned something that d dz of z squared is equal to 2 z. Okay, that's of course exactly like in real variables. So it appears that the power rule The power rule uh, uh, is, I should say, this is just like is just like uh, real variables. Okay, so we uh, we have two z, and so um, so that's a, that's a pretty nice result. So now let's study another example where things maybe aren't so clear and it's not as 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 uh, as, as as cut as straight straightforward as um, as as this case here for this simple function. All right, so let's try another one. Let's try the example f of z is equal to the modulus the complex modulus squared. All right, of course we know this is equal to z times z bar. And this is also can be written as x squared plus y squared. All right, we want to see if this has a derivative. So this has a flavor. This is, uh, of course, a, a real valued function. And you know, to get an idea of what it what it, it's like, all right, if we have some value z, all right, and so what's going to what it's going to bring out then is, of course, the the, the the magnitude of that number squared. So this seems like a function that sort of behaves a lot like f of x is equal to x squared, right? Only the only idea though is that all the points out here in the complex plane that are all um, of the same uh, radius will all have uh, the same value. But you know, of course, we have x there and x there. This x value here. Um, it, it behaves very similar. So you think that this is a very uh, simple function. It's a smooth, continuous function. It, it, we want to know if it has a, a derivative in the complex plane. So let's let's go check. So let's uh, limit of delta z going to zero. Uh, we can write it as z plus delta z squared minus z all over delta z. Delta z going to zero. We have to rewrite that again, and now we're gonna we're gonna write this in the, in the in a formula. We're gonna actually use this um, this definition of it that makes it a little simple to write down. Z plus delta z quantity times z bar plus delta z bar. Those are the complex conjugates there. 
minus z z bar all over delta z. Okay. And then we have to keep simplifying here. And now we see that there's a z z bar. Then there is a plus z delta z bar plus z bar delta z um, plus delta z delta z bar minus z z bar all over delta z. Okay, we see those cancel there. And now we have a, a little bit of work here. We see there's also this one cancels there. So we're left with limit delta z going to zero of what's left here is going to be a z here and then the ratio of delta z bar or over delta z and then we also see a cancellation there we get a plus z bar okay so that's what we're left with and it looks like this is this is getting pretty interesting uh, we, now we just really have to study what's going on here so we need to study, we need to kind of go over to the side here and, and see if we can study limit delta z going to zero of delta z over delta z. All right, um, so we want to know what that equals. Okay, this seems like a fairly straightforward function, you, uh, but let's see if we can actually, so what we're going to do is actually test, uh, you know, paths. So like any uh, uh, limit in the complex plane, it has to be true for all paths. So let's now just see if we can get some intuition by uh, looking at two different paths. So let's try, let's break this out so we can actually do this. So we can remember that delta z is actually going to be equal to um, delta x plus i delta y, right? So we can say delta y now, we can say is zero. And then we're going to take delta x starting at some non-zero point and take it towards zero. All right. So this is the example. And this is the delta z plane. This is the example of um, taking delta z to zero. And now we're going to take delta z or delta x this way or that way. And the delta y plane, we've set that to zero. So we're, we're taking our path into zero on the, on the delta x axis. So that will be what I'll call path one. And then there's going to be path two, which is going down this way. So that'll be my, my second test path, all right? So of course, this doesn't comprise all possible paths going in towards zero, but it's two test paths that we can, we can see if we can uh, figure out what's going on there. So the next one will be that delta x is equal to zero, and we're going to take uh, delta y going to zero. Okay, so um, let's give myself some room here. Uh, what we're going to do then is uh, let's try these two test paths. So uh, if delta y is equal to zero, that means that this limit then becomes limit delta x goes to zero. All right, so we're going to try test path one. And delta z bar then becomes just delta x. And then delta z on the bottom becomes delta x, right? Because we've set delta y equal to 0. And of course, that the limit is going to be 1. Now, let's try path number 2. Limit, and that's delta y going to 0. And now what we have in the top is a um, delta z bar. So that becomes a negative i delta y because we've made uh, delta x zero over i delta y. Okay, now we can take that limit and it turns out that will be negative one. Okay, so we see that we knew that the limit had to, for the limit to exist, it has to be true that every path leads to the same point. Okay, so let's see if we can go back to original functions. So we have a little bit of a problem now. So two different paths, so path one, we get the result, the limit here becomes uh, z plus z bar. And over here for path two, we got minus z plus z bar. Now for the, for the derivative to exist, it must be that these two things are equal. Well, the only way that these two things are equal is if z is equal to zero itself. All right. 
So this means we can now conclude that f prime of z only exists at z equals zero. This function, which seems so simple in the complex plane, has no derivative in the complex plane except for at the very origin of the complex plane. So that's a pretty interesting result, and I think it's a bit counterintuitive. So that just sort of uh, 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 really displays what's going on here in the complex plane. It's a little bit more complicated than uh, for real valued functions. All right, so now let's, uh, let's, uh, let's try uh, um, uh, 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 going, just trying to establish a bit more of what's going on. So, so again, uh, we all know that f prime of x, you know, has a clear, has a clear, meaning. Uh, but uh, it seems that f prime of z is, uh, it, it, you know, it's not not clear yet. And it turns out we're not going to really cover that right now, but I just want to uh, leave it at this, that um, uh, it turns out that when this function, when this uh, derivative exists, uh, it has a very profound profound uh, meaning and it's related to harmonic functions so remember what harmonic functions are if I have a function we'll call it you know um, we'll call it g of x comma y is harmonic if it solves Laplace's equation. And that means the Laplacian of g is equal to zero, and that can be written as gxx plus gy y is equal to zero. So it might not leap out at you right now that something about the derivative of f prime is going to be related to something uh, uh, about Laplace's equations, but it turns out, uh, again, this is a real valued function, this is a complex valued function, but it turns out there's an intimate connection between those two, and we're not going to uh, learn about it just yet, but just, uh, just, I'm, I'm just leading you on here to get you, uh, to get you uh, at least uh, piqued your interest so we can go over this later and, uh, and, and try to connect these two ideas. Okay, well, thank you very much.